Welcome to another episode of the Fight Insight Podcast, where we bring you all the latest news, updates, and analysis from the world of mixed martial arts. I'm your co-host, Brady Bunch, aka the Non-Binary Ninja, and with me as always, your host, Timmy B. Today we're going to talk Mai Tai to a Mai Tai Terminator, right? Uh, The UFC being shadow banned. We're going to discuss Mackenzie Dern's problems and a whole lot more. You can hit it, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Fight Insight Podcast. Let's talk. Our guest today showed why she is the best a few weeks ago at one Friday night fights 17 at the historic Lumpini Boxing Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand with a bloody good war. A member of the Fairtex Training Center out of Patea, Thailand and hailing from down under, this Aussie holds a Muay Thai record of 37 and 14, won the Road to One tournament. And last month signed an exclusive contract with One FC. Everybody, please welcome to the podcast Celeste, the best. Hanson, <laughs> how you Hi, doing? Celeste? Thanks for having me. Very good, thank you. How are you? Oh, good. Uh, I was trying to do my best Mitch Chilson impression because when he said your name, he loves your name. The way he screamed it out, it was amazing. How are yeah, you? He's awesome. Yeah, yeah really yeah. good. Thank you. How are you? Uh, congratulations on your fight. Incredible. Um, can I just say, Celeste, that is one of the fights that I can watch where my hair stands up on end. Like, <laughs> it was so exciting. And the crowd was insane. The, I, I swear, the crowd was loudest for your fight than any fight that night, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and you're looking good. You're everything's all back to normal facially for you. <laughs> you're yeah. you're all healed up. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm all good. I got a broken finger though, so everything else is all right. All right, all right, not bad, not bad. And uh, I did want to ask right off the bat, how is and I don't know how to say this, but how is Jaja and Gaal? Gaal? Oh, thank you. You know the name, my birds. Yeah, they're really good. I hit them in there, so they're not too loud. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right. Did you just get them? Uh, no, I've had them for one or two years now already. Oh, okay. Because you were carrying them around in a backpack I saw on your social media. <laughs> yeah, because they're always inside, so I just wanted them to have a look around outside. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Um, now, how are you feeling after your big win? How, what what yeah. happens after that? Yeah, I feel really good, thank you. I've had a lot of mixed responses. Like 90% of them are positive and 10% like everything in life are like not positive. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to focus on the positive. But yeah, I feel really good, thank you. Of co- Okay, 10% of people I... must be insane. What... I... <laughs> I know, I know you're saying you don't want to focus on it, but what on earth are people saying negative? Uh, they're saying that I had no technique. I didn't fight beautifully. Oh. One guy called me the day after. I was driving home. Like, like this is the worst time to say anything bad right after your fight. And he called me. He's like, that fight was so bad. You didn't block anything. Uh if anyone tells you it's good or your team it's good, don't listen to them. If they're saying it's good, you shouldn't you sh- you shouldn't listen to them. <laughs> you need to block that person immediately. <laughs> that is crazy. I one of the notes that I had written down, Brady Bunch, was how good your defense was because you were like you were shelling up perfectly. And it's so hard because with one FC, you're using small gloves for Muay Thai, which everything can get through you know like it's very very tough but you were blocking beautifully then countering and i mean that whole fight was just incredible if you have not watched celeste hansen's fight go on youtube there's plenty of clips one fc released like pretty much the whole fight but you can always go back and watch one friday night fight 17 and your fight is around the 44 minute mark and i know that offhand because i was telling all my friends go watch this fight. And I was sending them the link and I was telling them like right around 44 minutes, that's where her fight is. So uh, a lot of fans you have, like crazy, crazy. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it was a great fight. Now, I do want to ask at the end of the fight, 
So we don't know a lot about you, right? And um, you get on there and you get on the mic and we know that you won the road to one tournament. But yet when you're on the mic, you say, I want to get to the big show. So can you explain to our listeners, what does that mean? Like that you said, I want to get to the big show. Because for us, we're watching you. We're like, well, you're already on one FC. So what, <laughs> what did that mean? Get to the big show. Yeah. So uh, the one FC, the one you watch is the Friday night fights. That's at one Lumpini. But the level up is the international version, which is like where Stamp and Rot Tank fight. So that's the contract. I won fighting there. Uh, and I, it, the contract was for six fights. So hopefully soon I can fight there because it's the step up from one Lumpini. Oh, cause I'm in Canada and Brady Bunch is in New York, United States. So to us, it's all the same. Like to us, it's just one FC is one FC. We don't realize that there's a, a difference. So are you saying the road to one tournament you won was for the Lumpini version? Uh, no, no, no. It's for the international version. But that's so crazy you say that because in Thailand, everyone's like, oh, one new is okay, but one championship is like amazing. But that's pretty cool to hear you guys feel it's the same. Yeah, yeah. Like to us, one FC is one FC. So whether it's the Friday Night Fights version or whether it's the other version, it's all the same to us. Like we just love, I mean, for the people that love one FC, we just love watching one FC and we try to watch it as much as possible. So uh, yeah, just so you know, over here in the West, in the West, hey, you're a superstar, like you're on one FC. Uh, <laughs> now, when you won the road to one tournament, because there's a lot of road to one tournaments going on, like all the time, it seems. And I know a few Canadians right now that are involved in the road to one tournaments. What does it mean when you win it? Uh, so when you win for me personally, you got a six fight contract for one championship fighting at the international level uh the contract's worth like a hundred thousand dollars and nice. so yeah yeah really cool so you get to uh yeah fight on one fc so international i would say the one friday night is the domestic version for us and then the next is the international oh okay well and then you also win the um privilege of being on the fight insight podcast yeah <laughs> did, you, did you know that that was the a perk as well? that's the best part thank you uh, i know now <laughs> and yeah and uh on your instagram you posted a picture here which i again i was kind of confused so i wanted to understand it there's you with your one fc contract but this was from may did you just get the contract now or how did that all work out yeah so i didn't actually get to sign the contract till now but yeah i won it uh, like so long ago oh okay 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 so my confusion was okay so you win the road to one it means you have the six bite contract which means you can go to what you call the big show right from there but it's just you didn't sign the contract yet yeah i was wondering when i was gonna get it i thought you got it like the night you win but yeah i guess they just waited and then they made a ceremony which was really lovely and uh... it was worth the wait nice nice and so can i ask obviously you're born and raised in australia how did you get to because muay thai is such a unique sport right like nowadays with mma being so popular and stuff like that but here you are a young australian girl and then i read that you weren't necessarily a super athlete as a kid <laughs> no but then you transitioned no. So how does it turn out that a nice young Australian girl goes to one of the most brutal sports in the world and moves and lives in Thailand? How does that happen? Uh, yeah, so uh, I was just working for my mom and dad when I was younger. Um, I didn't really have anything that was for me. Like I worked for them a lot. And then I, uh, my mom and dad actually travel. They do carnivals in Australia. So we weren't living anywhere to do sport. I was not athletic. I was not fit. I was fat and drank and ate bad food, like t terrible lifestyle. And then um, I met this guy and I thought like we would, you know, something would happen and he called me fat. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym and lose weight. And the gym actually offered, it offered boxing. And I, I'd always wanted to be a famous boxer, but I was like, it never happened because I traveled. And they're like, oh, no, sorry, we just offer Muay Thai. And I tried it. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. 
Like I just knew from then that this is what was going to happen. And then I said, can I fight? They laughed at me because I couldn't even, I couldn't even stand up straight or do a star jump. They were like, what the hell? Of course you can't fight. And then I was like, oh, well, I have to go to the next show or next carnival. Do you know anywhere in Thailand I could go? Then they said there's a place in Koh Samui. And um, yeah, I went there to try and I just, I've been here ever since. That's crazy. So, and, and just, I'm just curious, what do you mean working carnivals? Like a circus? Oh, uh, no, no. So my parents uh, do food. We have chocolate strawberries and we travel Australia. We work like special events, carnival. We call them shows in Australia. Oh. But, you know, like the games and roller coasters and stuff. Yeah, cool. Oh, okay. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So you moved to Thailand. At what age did you, did you pick up and go? Uh, I was... 21 i think it was oh. seven years ago now i'm 29 okay so 2016 i think all right and so a lot of fans were writing in knowing that you live in thailand what's the craziest thing you've seen in thailand <laughs> <laughs> what does crazy mean you know, uh, i mean i mean different levels uh, okay, let's go for a let's go for top level crazy. What is what 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 have you seen there? Because people think like you know people have a, a very uh, interesting thought of like what's in Thailand and how amazing it is out there and the party scene and all that. So what's some of the craziest stuff you've seen? The things I'm thinking of, I can't say. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it, okay, so then it's as crazy as what we think. Uh, no, I was just thinking about bad things that happened to me because that's what I. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> that someone didn't want her to tell the crazy thing. She got blocked out. Oh, there you are, Celeste. <laughs> the... uh, uh, crazy is in I don't know, like Muay Any... Thai. Yeah, sure, crazy Muay Thai. Uh, I went to Lumpini Stadium three years ago, maybe, or five years ago, six years, I don't know. Um, they're all blending in. And the on the ring, there was, it had written, uh, women cannot touch the ring and don't sit close to it. And I was cornering my friend and, you know, you're close to the ring in the corner and the security guards were like, hey, you, like, not close. And I was like, what do you mean? And yeah, I told my Thai trainers, I wanted to fight at Wimpenny Stadium. Everyone laughed at me. They all thought I was a joke because for women, like the, the, there was no opportunity. There was no, there was no future for women financially fighting. There was no rankings, no belts, nothing. And then um, it was my goal to be the first ever woman to fight at the PD Stadium. And thankfully, uh, two years ago, I think, or last year, November. So two years ago, November. Yeah, I was lucky enough to become the first ever woman to fight there. And who's laughing now? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Because you know what? Uh, I may be mistaken, but do you know the trans fighter Nung Rose by any chance? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I think I read like something similar where maybe she got to fight there and it was like a big deal because they like changed the rules about the culture and everything. Uh, because normally you would have to fight without a top, I think. Because uh, they're, you know, lady boy, still kind of considered male. So I just, uh, I think I remember hearing a story like that. But I think that's so cool that you are the pioneer that brought that in for uh, female athletes. Especially when they were laughing at you. So that's, that's <laughs> inspiring. I'm sorry. Chiming in with my ADHD. Uh, no, no, I love it. Because I love Long Rose. And she was, yes, the first lady boy to fight at Lumpini. She's an amazing fighter yes. and she made history. I love what she's about. Yeah, she, uh, so I'm non-binary and she's largely why I started training again. Uh, she's inspired me. Uh, where I boxed, boxed a man back in October, uh, won, it was awesome. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So I love what you're doing for female athletes around the globe and the fact that, uh, yeah, you backed up the story. I thought I remembered even cooler. So thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, I love Nung Rose and I'm happy that you did it as well. 
Yeah, it's amazing. And so I, I was just at a fundraiser at a at a local Muay Thai gym. I don't know if you saw on my Instagram, Brady Bunch. I went on on the weekend. It was a it was a guest we had on the podcast like two years ago, back when I started. It was a guy. Uh, his name is Lanny. Runs Stride Muay Thai in Toronto, and he was putting on free self defense seminars for women back when there was those um, Asian women being attacked and stuff like that. So he was putting on free seminars, and we had him on. And ever since then, I've been a friend of him and a friend of his gym. They were doing a fundraiser for their kids, their their young kids team who have been progressing and doing amazing. They're going to Iowa for some tournaments and so they need to raise money and stuff like that. But I was talking to one of the guys there, uh, Noah, and he's talking about moving to Thailand to train because he's taking this real seriously. And this kid is good, like be on the lookout for Noah Geraldo. Yeah. Uh, so, and he's the, <laughs> it's so funny. He's a very unassuming kid. Like he looked like he's got glasses and he just looks like a nice little polite young kid, but he's a killer. And so he was saying he might go to Thailand to train. So what would be advice that you have, Celeste, when you're a foreigner going to Thailand? Like what should he think about? What should he avoid so that when he goes there, he gets the best out of it? Yeah, I think he should try ask around about uh, what gyms to go to if he knows someone that's had a good experience somewhere, that would be really important. Um, or if people have had bad experiences, stay away. But you shouldn't judge everything. But if you know them personally, you should listen to what they have to say um, right. and and see what he wants. Like I mentioned before, being in Phuket, uh, is there's more stuff to do outside of training. But the training for me personally has been a lot better in Batea, but the it's not as fun outside of training. So it really depends what you want out of it. And Bangkok, very boring city life, All but right. amazing training as well. All right. So I think maybe write down your own goals and what you want out of this, and then you can start asking advice on where to go. Is, is one city, like, does your money go further in certain cities? areas than others like if i was going out there to train would it cost me way more to go to one place than the other uh it's kind of hard to say because it depends on you as a person spending but i would say Phuket's is pretty expensive but if you know where to go you can do it cheap same as patea like fairtex is expensive but uh maybe if you stay a long time you can get it a lot cheaper but the food here is cheaper than Phuket. So also it comes back to if you know someone that lives here and talk to them and they'll be able to say what's cheaper, what's not cheaper. But and if you don't know anyone, message someone like me or another fighter that lives here. And yeah. I have a uh, one last question. I used to teach high school. Uh, could people go out there and get like a teaching job and survive and train? Like, is that possible to balance teaching English maybe in the school somewhere and training and possibly having occasional matches while out there? Yeah, of course. And it's good you said occasional because teaching is a full-time job, nine yeah. to five or whatever the hours are. I know a lot of people that live here and do that. But um, if you want to go to a higher level, such as one Lumpini, you've got to dedicate your whole life to Muay Thai. But if you just want the occasional matchup, yeah, of course. There's like always everywhere looking for teachers here. All right. All right, cool. Well, you're going to see Brady Bunch uh, in about seven hours. She's just going <laughs> to board that flight and you'll see her. Uh, no, that's awesome, you know, because I think it's so cool, like that what you've done and what you've accomplished. I appreciate you saying people can reach out to you. Uh, I'm going to put at the bottom of the screen, there's your Instagram handle. It's at Celeste the best seven. That is you on Instagram. Is that the best place to see all the stuff that is about Celeste? Like you're mostly on Instagram. That's your bigger social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to know anything, yeah, everything's basically on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And uh, obviously I have to ask, is there six other, oh, hold on. She's uh, popped back out again. It might be when her phone rings. Yeah. Uh, so I know that sometimes people have some connection. So let's see if she'll pop back in. But yeah, so go follow her at Celeste the Best 7 
Here she comes back in. There you go. Oh, How are you? Sorry, cut out. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So my question is, is there six other Celeste the Best? Or why are you Celeste the Best seven? <laughs> oh, you know when you're a kid and you make an email? <laughs> this yeah. is this is my email from when I was a kid. Ah, okay, okay. There you go. Uh, okay, so Celeste the Best Sevens. But you are the number one best Celeste, right? <laughs> Thank you. I don't think there's any other Celeste. Well, not that I know of. No, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So um, I take it. What does your family think about you uh, giving up the 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 show life and going off to Thailand? Are they proud of you? Were they scared? Did they think you're crazy? <laughs> yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the start, they were very sad. Uh, their baby got taken away from them. Uh, and my dad said to me when I first started, he said, women can't fight as yeah. in like women are not strong. Um, he told me to get something I can make money with because as I said before, there was no financial future for a Muay Thai fighter as a female. Uh, my mom was worried about me getting hurt. Now, uh, I guess I've done it for so long, they just accepted it. But even after my last fight, oh, my mom was like, why are you doing this? You're hurting yourself. Look, I'm a bad mother for letting you get hurt. And I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, what the hell? This is what I do. Yeah. And she's very like up, down, up, down about it. Well, it is crazy. I mean, like you, you just put on such an amazing fights. I'm, I'm plural fights, like such amazing fights you put on. So excited to see you back with one. I do want to put this little quick video here. And I, this was from your Instagram. And I took this photo. I think this is when you won the road to one. Is it that what this is? Take a look. Is that you when you won the, the won the tournament? Yeah, yeah, and I started blowing my eyes out on the stage. <laughs> of course, of course you have to. That's amazing. Now, one thing that I noticed in that video, which I want to ask you, I don't want I don't want to get you in trouble, Celeste, but in that video, there's a ring card girl or something next to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's a lady boy. Oh, is it? Was that what you were yeah. doing? Because I assume that, and I, part of me being me, wanted to ask. <laughs> right? No, I, okay, hold yeah. on. I'm going to play it one more time so people can see because they're probably focused on you. But take a look to the left of you. There's a, a ring. Roll. Yeah, she's a famous lady boy here. She's stunning. Oh, she's so okay. nice. But okay, but she's a ring girl, right? uh she was presenting like, the belt oh okay okay celeste i'm not like you know i'm not saying it for any like perverted reason or anything like that but since the pandemic one fc got rid of their ring girls which was a big part of the show because they would give the medal and they would do the presentation of the medal and stuff like that like they were a bigger part of the show than in ufc and stuff like that they didn't just show the number they were in the ring at the end and gave you the medal where the hell are they celeste <laughs> why why is I, one fc not bringing back the ring girls and having that nice metal presentation in the ring i love that why why is that gone celeste i've heard a lot of people say this i do not know the reason i don't even know why yeah i have no idea yeah right. i think they should bring it back too but yeah, I mean, now as the road to one champion and as a, as a multiple winner on the big stage, you know, I feel like you should be really big in there with Shatri. So just tell them that the Fight Insight podcast demands the ring girls be back. We want it to be part of the show. I'll just and... call him now. Hello, okay. if, the ring girls. If you don't mind, as soon as we get off. Yeah, I do that. But yeah, it's so weird that the one FC hasn't. And then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, wait a second. Maybe they're slowly bringing it back. I don't know what's happening. But uh, Celeste, it was an uh, absolute pleasure having you on the podcast. Is there anything that you wanted to say to our to the fans, friends, viewers, and listeners of the podcast? Anything that you wanted to get out? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for supporting me, believing me. And yeah, I hope I can inspire you to go for whatever you love and give it 100% because with hard work, yeah, anything is possible. Yeah. I mean, you are the first female to ever fight at Lumpany Stadium, 
right? The first person to ever set foot in that ring. You are an, a foreigner who moves to Thailand at the age of 21, gives up her life, dedicates it to Muay Thai, not an athlete, and has now achieved like the highest ranks of, of combat sports. It's crazy for you for Muay Thai. Like you have to be like just such an incredible hero to like young girls around the world, especially in Australia. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, actually, I, I don't, I'm not saying this to boast myself, but just to add to the helping females, uh, not only was I the first woman to ever fight there, I was also the first woman to ever be a champion there as well. And to me, like, you know, then people that were laughing at me, now I was the first girl, the first champion. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, it just makes me so happy to be like, ah. Yeah, so motivating. Like, obviously, that's, that's inspiring. Yeah, it's so like, amazing, Celeste. And you're the nicest person. Like, this could not have happened to a nicer person. Too. When you walk down the street, do people just flood to you for autographs, or how does that work? Do you have to <laughs> no, wear sunglasses, like push people away? No, no you're okay? <laughs> no, no. You can yeah. live a normal life? Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, who is... You know, being part of One FC, like we talked last week, we talked with Jade Masson Wong from BKFC, and she was talking about how a lot of the females in the BKFC have created kind of like a sisterhood. Like they, you know, they all chat with one another and talk. Are you close with the other female Muay Thai fighters or other One FC fighters and stars? Yeah, yeah, of course. I feel exactly the same about Muay Thai. I feel like everyone knows everyone. Yeah, the sisterhood, like. I I know so many people that I've never met in real life. I feel like my best friends. Nice, nice. Uh, I know that when when we published that you were going to be coming on the podcast, there's a Canadian Muay Thai fighter, Amenzi. Apparently, she kind of knows you or met you or trained with you. She says you're the greatest person. Uh, there's another really good friend of the podcast, Muay Thai fighter, Lion Fight champion, Regan Coconut Gowing. She says she knows you and, and everybody speaks so highly of you. Like when, when we posted it, they're like, oh, Celeste is the best, you know? So uh, it's <laughs> oh, really so nice. Um, Celeste, I want to ask you a question that um, my mother used to ask me when I was a child growing up. And so I want to ask it to you. We're asking all the guests of the podcast on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you? Uh, 100, <laughs> 10. <laughs> all right fantastic do you want to elaborate on that uh yeah actually i just shared a memory recently this time last year i was absolutely miserable like i was getting shingles from being mentally exhausted like it was just in a really bad environment and people were so horrible to me uh i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but like threatening my career threatening okay. my life um and I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired and I, I did something about it. And thankfully now I'm so happy. Everyone's so nice to me and like I'm actually appreciated and valued and loved. And yeah, I'm so happy. That's oh. awesome, Celeste. I'm, I'm so happy for you. I did see that post that you shared. It was a you, you shared that memory on Instagram and you were saying something about that, that, that you know, it was a, only a year ago when things were so different for you. So I'm so happy. You're the highest ranking ever. No one has ever said there are 100 out of 10. So that's pretty good. <laughs> My, I think because it was so horrible, it's so good now. But that, but that's the thing, though, right? Everything's you know relative to like where our life has been or where we're going or what we're doing. So the fact that you're so so happy now is amazing. Uh, my mom would have been very happy if I ever answered her 100 Brady Bunch. I'm thinking I don't think I ever did that. I would say 10 at times, but I never said 100. <laughs> so that's pretty good, Celeste. Um, Celeste, in the future do you ever think or or maybe now do you ever think about doing motivational speaking because your story is so inspiring you have such a good story about you you have such a great personality i'm sure like kids around the world would love to like hear that from you oh that's so nice thank you yeah i've thought about it i've pictured myself going back to my school and giving motivational speeches and um the vice principal of my school uh she told me basically i was gonna be nothing <laughs> and she was not very nice to me and i was not a sporty person and yeah. to be an athlete now and to go back and yeah talk to the kids and be like 
Uh, look, I was where you are right now. Like I didn't know what my future was holding. I was very young. Um, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And maybe some people in your life are not very nice to you, don't believe in you. But the most important thing is to just keep trying and find what your thing is. I tried thousands of different things before I found Muay Thai. And like even everyone around me was like, oh, Celeste is so lost. She's a lost cause. And then finally I kept trying. I didn't give up. I found Muay Thai and it gave me dreams and goals and something for my life and not helping others. Um, and yeah, I, I would love the vice principal to be there when I'm talking. <laughs> At the end of the speech, would you give the vice principal some gloves and then you would just spar <laughs> maybe? Spar just one round maybe? <laughs> That's so funny, yeah, maybe, yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, now she's the winner. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh celeste you are amazing i i really appreciate you coming on the podcast so soon after your win too that's what always like i, I really appreciate doing that too to talk to people after the win and see how they're doing and how they're feeling so thank you so much it was lovely to meet you uh i do hope that we can have you on the podcast again and um next time i have you on you'll probably brady bunch will probably be there in person with you because you'll both <laughs> be living in thailand and fighting yeah yeah um <laughs> So Celeste, all the best to you, Brady Bunch. Before we let her go, is there anything that you wanted to say? No, just, uh, you know what? So our fans may not know this, but this is one of our earlier interviews. Uh, but it was the perfect start to the day. Uh, just like, I'm very inspired and motivated. Uh, and also like my co-host said, like, I love meeting people that seem so sweet, so humble, have stories, have been through stuff. Uh, but are also like killers in their sport. Uh, so yeah, keep being you, keep knocking down walls, uh, ceilings and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Celeste, you're amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, who is someone that you think that we should have on the podcast? Someone that's cool like you and would be a good time to talk to? Uh, my friend Claire, uh, she trains in Phuket at Phuket Top Team. She's so cool and I love her fighting style and she's such a nice person. She has a really inspiring story, but um, I'll let her tell you and it'll be perfect for your podcast and I'll send you her Instagram. Thank you so much. That would be amazing. I love that. So please do send me her uh, thing. We'll, uh, when we post this uh, podcast, we'll tag you and everything. But thank you so much, Celeste. You're amazing. Good luck in all your future endeavors and, and keep kicking ass and being inspiring. Thank you, Celeste. And thanks for having me. I love you guys' podcast. So, yeah, it was an honor to be here. Thanks for asking me. Like I said, you won the opportunity by winning the road to one. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, Celeste. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Cool. All right. What an absolute amazing. Could not have been cooler. Celeste, the best. She definitely is the best. And, again, her Instagram's down at the bottom. For those that are only uh, listening on audio, it's at... Celeste, C-E-L-E-S-T, the best, and then the number seven. So Brady Bunch, how cool, right? Like oh, cool. Uh, inspiring trailblazer, like you said. Those are the kind of things that are so amazing, right? Yeah. And to be from Australia and do all that, geez Louise. I don't know. It's just so cool. Just such a cool story. Um, if you're here watching the podcast because of Celeste, thank you so much for joining the podcast. We have this is episode 121, 122, something, 122, I think. Uh, so you've got lots to catch up on if you're new to the podcast. But otherwise, thank you so much. Next week on the podcast, I don't know who we have yet. Someone, we're going to have someone awesome. We've got a few lined up. I just got to figure out who's coming on on that day. Of course, last week, we all know that Mark Clamaco messaged while we were doing the podcast saying that he's going to come on. So we could always have him on. Uh, but I have a few more people and I'm really excited. There's an organization in the United States and California called Up Next Fighting, which is a fantastic young organization. Uh, the new ring announcer there, her name is Ringside Rain. Find her. I've been following her for a while. She's coming on the podcast because she's going to be announcing for them again later this month. So super excited to talk to her because I've been following her career forever. She's like a wrestling announcer, like a like a up and coming announcer. She's a young Filipino girl out in California and she was just kicking ass doing her thing. And then she got picked up by UNF to be their formal announcer for their amateur shows. Awesome. 
it's so cool, you know, when these people like achieve their dreams. I just love this stuff. It's, it's so neat to meet these people and see how humble they are and how wonderful they are. Um, friend of the podcast update. Do I have anything? Uh, Rageworks Podcast Network, of course, at rageworksnetwork.com. We're a part of their network podcast, so you can go check them out. And then uh, Tanya Najjar. When we had her on before, yeah. she's she's fighting now on June 17th. So she wasn't able to fight at Invicta, which she was supposed to at the time we interviewed her. Uh, that fight got canceled, but she's fighting June 17th now. So we're very excited for Tanya Nijar. So follow her. Awesome. Yeah. And go order some ciders from her dad. Remember she had that cidery? So. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. What else do we got going on? So Brady Bunch, I wanted to ask you a few topics. It was kind of a slow week for like news. Yeah. And stuff like that. And then early this morning or late last night, I guess, some guy messaged me and says he thinks that UFC has been shadow banned by the by Instagram. Interesting. So like people like I don't even know what I feel about that. People always talk about this, like in my stupid little circles of like uh, MMA or Muay Thai pages that I talk to. People are always like. I've been shadow banned. I'm, my, my posts don't get a lot of views, whatever. And I'm like, ah, maybe it's just because your posts are kind of crummy, you know? Yeah. Uh, but someone showed on, on UFC. I'm going to put up a picture. It's very terrible. It's very small. But if you go to the UFC page now on their Instagram reels, they normally get like over a million views on their reels. Their last two views have like 8,000 views. Interesting. So it's so weird that suddenly like the UFC with like 33 million or whatever followers, they're only getting like 8,000 views on their reels. You know what? I, it's interesting. They may be shadow banned or what I'm wondering is this. As someone who's like work does an influencer, gets deals sometimes, they change things on the Instagram side. I don't know. Just, just throwing out a random theory. Yeah. Uh, where I know that my international followers from certain countries used to be equated into like whatever formula of like what my reaches and impressions and all that. Uh, certain countries are not included anymore. Uh, wow. I remember something happened with some laws in Europe maybe. Okay. Uh, so like that was like a good year ago. I remember it kind of changed the way I can even see things or people see things and kind of hurts meaning like I have less pull in the sense of right. offered because they don't include it. I don't know. Or they're shadow banned. Cause I do think that's a kind of real thing. Uh, yeah. I think sometimes Elon Musk, this is another theory, like making people pay for check mark. Yeah. Right. I have a feeling that a lot of these, Social media companies are getting greedier and greedier. And the big company like the UFC probably has to pay money for advertising if they want to get like the big push forward. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's so weird though, right? It's so weird how this world works with like social media and stuff like that. And like, cause you just think like, why can't this just be like what it's meant to be? Just be open. And if you follow someone, you see their stuff. Like my, if I scroll through my Instagram now, it's like, uh, sponsored post after sponsored post. Like it's not even people I follow. It's like all these like pushed things on me. Yes. So it's so weird. It, it is getting more and more like that, which is kind of tough, but it could also be that the UFC keeps posting power slap stuff. Yes. And they're mad about it. Yeah. And people blast the, the, the Instagram page. Like, so anytime they do a collab, po a collaboration post with power slap, it's like, a thousand comments of people going get this off my feed stupid power slap blah 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 like people really hate it yes but the problem is is when you comment i hate this i'm pretty sure that instagram still thinks that that's a good thing because it's still going well this is engagement so it's good yes Again, but then i also wonder if like if enough people are reporting it reporting it or, or blocking it or stuff like that then maybe that kind of hurts the algorithm yeah it does something but anyways there's just some weird news. So if you're interested in nerdy stuff like that, go check that out. And of course that came, uh, or that was just one of my buddies posted that. So yeah, I, anyway, I interesting. I'm wondering though, I'm going to bring up someone that you wouldn't be able to see, Dana White. Yeah, well, um, he's blocked me, so I can't see him. I know that he's <laughs> more active in the comment sections in posts. Oh. Tied to MMA blogs. Yeah. 
right? When they're posting about him or something tied to him, like he's going back and forth with the comment that com uh, people in the comments hating on him. Yeah. And also, like chiming in to like hype up someone who says something like positive or pro him. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't seen him do like, I was literally thinking of this yesterday. I was like, yeah, why is Dana this active in this random MMA blog page? Right. Maybe yeah. he's doing something. Maybe he's out there because the UFC page isn't getting a uh, pull at the moment. I don't know. I don't know. It's so weird. It's just it's just one of those weird things, you know. Like uh, I don't know. People always talk about the the shadow banning stuff, and I just never really believe it. Or I don't know. I, I'm sure it is real, but I still feel like. But if you've got true engaged fans, they sh they should still see your stuff because they'd be looking for it. I know every now and then I'll I'll think about someone and I'll be like. How come I haven't seen a post from them in a while? You know what the big thing is? Like, if you really are a diehard or something, you got to set up notifications for that account. Oh, right, 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 right. I, yeah. Yeah. You won't miss anything, right? Problem is most people don't know how to do that or are too lazy to do that. Uh, well, who's, yeah, but then who's to say that the shadow ban doesn't stop the notifications from coming in, right? I, like, I don't know if it would. I don't know. Anyways, hey, speaking of that, go follow us, people. Like, yeah. follow us on, on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. Do whatever. Rank us, rate us, do all that good stuff. We would love that if you could do that. That would be very appreciated. Um, last thing I wanted to talk about, because this is going to be a little bit of a shorter podcast. Like I said, we're doing this early, early morning <laughs> for us. So I got to go back to sleep. Uh, here's something that's really crazy. Okay. Uh, this was maybe... The week of the Mackenzie Dern fight, when Mackenzie Dern started going off and on the interviews was talking about her divorce and her marital troubles, and she would always be kind of tearing on the interview, and it was very sad, right? Yeah. There's a page that I follow on Instagram. Uh, I forget what the name is, but you'll see it on the screen. And it's, a, it's an MMA page dedicated to women, okay? Like women's mixed martial arts. If you run a page that's dedicated to women, I figure is two things. You're either a pervert and you just want to keep posting like, you know, sexy photos of the women, or you really respect women and you're trying to give them a stronger platform to focus on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you agree with that? Kind of maybe. Yeah. Or you're trying to hit a niche market, blah, 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 but whatever but the niche market would be for perverts or for people that really love women's martial arts, right? Uh, so they posted this photo during the time, and this was a post about the fact that she was having marital troubles. Here's the picture of the post, and I apologize if you're on audio, I'll explain what it is. It is a picture of Mackenzie Dern on one side, and the other side is a picture of her and her husband in a loving embrace. So there it is there, and it's like, so it says UFC star uh, Mackenzie Dern exposes harrowing abuse in marriage and intense court battle. And the photo debut MMA rankings chooses to post is the two of them in a loving embrace. It's clickbait. It's clickbait and it's pretty disrespectful. No? Yeah. Well, I for a lot of clickbait usually is disrespectful. Uh, but it... I know, but like, look, you can find any number of photos of Mackenzie Dern for clickbait. I, you don't need one with her hugging up her husband. Well, guess what? Like going clickbait wise. I'm just thinking engagement. At the end of the day, I agree with you. But whoever's running this account, I think is more like, what can I do to get this attention, get this poll? So <sighs> any photo, go yeah. where they look so happy, right? In yeah. a way because they probably know some of the comments are going to be hating on Mackenzie yeah. simply because of how happy they look to the left, you know? So if you see on there, I posted at the very bottom, I removed the uh, banner so you can see, but my comment right away was maybe don't post a photo of them together like this just out of respect. That, that, that comment got a billion likes. All right. All like right. People were very supportive of that because I'm like, you could choose any number of photos, you jackasses. Like, we, it's Mackenzie Dern fight week. Like, everybody's clicking on things for Mackenzie Dern anyways. Just put any photo. Anyways, 
did you hear okay so i felt bad about that because i felt bad i i hated seeing her you know tearing up and all that during the weeks i voted i i bet big against her thinking <laughs> thinking that she was going to be an emotional mess and then she goes out and tears up angela hill uh so i lost money but um did you hear the updated story about Mackenzie Dern? With Dana White or? What? The Dana White feedback to her? No, what was that? Supposedly she goes backstage after like winning big and he's like, you could have knocked her out. You could have knocked her out. Like, oh, uh, oh, oh. like almost like she's getting pressured because she hasn't knocked anyone out yet. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Dana mm -hmm. was a little disappointed. Uh, go on. Yeah, I mean, well, okay, but I kind of agree with that, right? Like, I also thought it was weird that she got a belt promotion, like her third stripe on her black belt, at the end of that fight in the cage, when she didn't finish the girl. Yeah. It was like, you had her dead to rights after the second round. It was kind of weird that she couldn't submit Angela Hill. You know what I mean? I mean, kudos to Angela Hill. Amazing. But yeah. third degree black belt lifetime jujitsu and you had the girl all over her i feel like you need to submit her you know so I could, I could see where dana white is like hey look man get get this done all right yeah but here's the thing he just wanted the knockout i don't think he wanted the submission i think he wanted a knockout like a punch oh, well that's kind of hard to freaking yeah i think that's what guarantee right like the article i was reading about was more so like uh, he was on, not that she didn't finish her that you should have knocked her out i think there was one point where he felt like i don't know maybe i'm wrong i'm half asleep well that's nonsense because Mackenzie dern isn't a striker by exactly. trade right like i mean what the frig so exactly. she uses i mean she expertly uses her striking to get in close to you right she throws the haymakers and stuff knowing that hey i just want you to get in close to me um no the news that i wanted to raise because again slow news week for us um she so they go to court for their divorce proceedings and um there's i mean this is a, a report i'm reading on uh, sports kita which normally is pretty decent uh so they talk about the proceedings and that there's allegations of abuse the guy allegation and this is all allegedly right but there's alleged allegations against the guy for abusing the dogs fuck that if that's real that is i will kill people for that stuff I, that i have no patience for that uh then there's some money stuff blah 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 but then he he accuses dern of abusing their daughter which jesus like it, that's why she was saying it was a very messy divorce and that's why she was crying and all that because i guess if there's all this shit going on and whatever right and you never know what's happening but here's the part that I just want to talk about, which is a little bit maybe less terrible. The court rules that she has to pay him spousal support and alimony because she's the main breadwinner. That's horrible. I mean, yeah, for a bunch of reasons. But guess how much the monthly amount is? How much? Take a guess. Monthly, what she has to pay the guy I don't know. Is it high or low? In spousal and child allowance. Is it something something large? Take a guess. Three three thousand. Three thousand dollars a month? Yeah, I have no idea. I, I'm so bad at this stuff. It's more. That's crazy to me. So she makes good money. How does she make that money? I don't know how much money she makes. Deals maybe is included in it. Like stuff like that. Four thousand and six dollars a month. That's, That's a, bullshit. I mean, you can't. She, her lawyer couldn't even get it rounded down to four thousand. <laughs> four thousand and six dollars a month. What is this? Does the little girl have like a Porsche? Like, what? What is this little girl? Need four thousand dollars for, and it's joint custody, mind you. So they get joint custody, and she has to pay him spousal and child allowance of four thousand and six dollars a month. Let's go. I'm sorry. So that's cr that's kind of crazy, though. No, like that's a huge amount of money. That's a, yeah, it's insane. I'm happy though that she's making that much at least to be whatever they calculated that from, and I hope she can uh, 
keep making some good money in the future. And I don't know that things could change for her in court. Uh, I mean, and and it doesn't say anything about whether what allegations are true and blah, blah, blah. Of course not. And we hope that it's all just fake shit that was trying to get the other person money or blah, blah, blah. Right? Yeah. You should never say that stuff, though, anyways, because fuck, that little girl's going to grow up one day and read this shit. So I'm if happy. it is fake. It was hard enough getting a divorce with two dogs, right? Mm. I literally think all the time how nasty things probably would have gotten if a kid was involved right yeah um, of course so i mean really sad but uh four thousand dollars a month here's the thing you're a fighter i don't know how much money she gets from like endorsements and stuff but your fighting is so up in the air you can fight one time a year you can fight four times you can fight zero times so that four thousand dollars can't be based on like your fight career so it's got to be other things but I don't know. I always wonder how these people are making money. Like, you know, like she posts all these like sexy photos on Instagram. Like, is that, is that making you money? No. Like, I don't know where you're getting the money from. Did you see the Paige Van Zandt uh, photo shoots that were going online? Did you see that? Yeah. Where she's like, uh, like, like kind of making out with another chick. And I'm like, where do these photos go? Like, what, where do these things make these people money? I don't even understand at all. Like, I guess on OnlyFans, I guess it makes you go to their OnlyFans and then there's more. Yeah. Right. It can also be, makes me wonder if there's like, who, who's the other girl? Maybe it helps promote her. Maybe she's got some money to do that shoot with her. Right. Like, and you pay, and you pay Paige Van Zandt to do it with you, you mean? Yeah. Right. Like, you never know. Yes. Kind of like how a up and coming rapper with a good amount of money will pay a big artist to hop on the track, right? Oh, 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 okay. This promotes me well, right? I guess, yeah. I don't know. Just crazy. I, I just have no idea how money works. I mean... Makes you wonder, too. Like, I just think of little things. Like, what were they wearing, right? Who designed whatever they wore, right? Were they paid to wear that in that, right? Like... I guess. But then you would think, though, then in the post, it would say, like, clothing by blah, 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 or whatever, right? Like... But you don't see that. So that's that's what I'm always looking at. Look at these posts of these people that post this stuff. But some people uh, want the attention. Uh, I will say when I was listening back to our podcast last week with uh, Jad, it was pretty funny, though, when I said about the, you know, what's on your OnlyFans. Uh, there is the nudity. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, anyway, so Mackenzie Dern, good God. Uh, crazy. And I hope that she's okay because she's a killer. But I also feel like I feel really bad for Mackenzie Dern's next opponent because <laughs> we saw how mad she was in the heat of the battle. Now that this has come out, man, she is going to kill the next chick. So I think I'm going to mortgage my house and I'm going to put everything on Mackenzie Dern for the next fight because uh, she's she's got bills to pay. So holy shit uh brady bunch we're almost at the end of time that was kind of it for the topics it was just really the dana the the instagram thing for ufc and then the um the stuff here for uh, mackenzie dern talk to celeste the best i don't know what else you got anything else uh from just plug myself a bit uh yeah. i'm in talks with new line cage fighting uh Sounds like I might fight in August. Um, nice. Uh, male opponent, which I'd be down for. Nice. Uh, what's really cool, you know, one of my big problems is I trained out of one gym for so long that knew about all my fights. And every time that I needed a coach in my corner, no one showed up. Yeah. Uh, I've been training at another gym. Some of the people I met from my first gym opened their own. Uh, and one of the one of the dudes there last night was telling me he's always wanted to go check out Kentucky, which is where my where my kickboxing match would be. Uh, if Sweet. I Sweet. Uh, so it feels nice to finally have like people that will fully show up. I'm also going to be competing in my old coach's Manimals. Uh, I think it's called the Choke and Smoke. Token Choke. Token choke, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so it sounds like if they can't find some type of trans opponent for me to show up for a featured match, I'm just going to be competing in the tournament, uh, guaranteed at least two matches. I think it might be one loss elimination. Uh, so I'm super excited for that, uh, no matter what happens. Uh, so we're looking for sponsors still. Uh, but through that as well, what I'm excited about is um, Manimal and I have been talking. Uh, and he's down to show up in my corner to coach uh, nice. training with him again, too. So I have like cool, two cool opportunities. Maybe I'll have both both them show up for me. Maybe it'll be randomly where I'm fighting. Uh, but it sounds like, you know, the eventual goal is to have at least one MMA fight against another trans athlete. Uh, so I think man will be, will be great for that. Uh, so I hope some people show up for this uh, token choke, right? Uh, it's yeah. Been a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Now, two okay well two things one is i kept seeing you post about that token choke and it's toke as in like like smoke yes and choke yes. i kept reading it as token choke and i'm like is brady bunch going into to choke out a token asian guy <laughs> like what what kind of terrible uh, event is this so i was like no uh no it's not token choke it's toke and choke yeah. Uh, so congratulations on that. Good luck on that. And then I did want to say the new gym that you're talking about. One of the things I thought kind of was cool and just in the event that, uh, this is, um, pride month, they had changed their logo to like a pride version of the logo, which I thought was cool. Like, I don't think every company has to do that. Like, I don't, you know, I've got different mixed feelings on whether you have to, and sometimes whether companies, when they do it, is it genuine or not? Yes. Right. But I did think it was really cool that this new gym that you were looking at going to actually did alter their logo to put the colors behind their logo and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool um, and very indicative that this would be a good environment for you and for anybody, really. Um, and I did want to mention your gloves that are next to you because yeah. that's from a photo shoot that you did. And those are pretty cool, too. Yes. And you know what? Uh, I like that. I actually got these from Enemy Territory. It's Evolution, my time in New York City. Okay. Uh, which my two gyms, my first gym fights against. Uh, mm. And I know that my current gym will be fighting against too. Uh, so but, did you so did you did you use like uh, fake do fake money? Like uh <laughs> no, nah, you know what? Fake bills? They were super friendly and that's what I love. Oh, uh, okay. Nice, you know, nice. Uh, for those for those for those in the audio version of the podcast, it's rainbow co rainbow colored boxing gloves. Yep, and you can see them on Brady Bunch's Instagram if you follow Brady Bunch, which of course you should. Uh, then you would see them on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm ex I'm excited. Uh, yeah. and, and as you know, I'm still sounds like I might be doing some bare knuckle, but I want to do this stuff to get ready first. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot my two banners for the show. Here's my two banners that I made. I always forget to put the banners on the bottom. And this is just for the, for the people that are watching. I had that, which was have some class. And that was for the debut MMA rankings, right? Like, okay. And let me just end off with this. If you're a goddamn media page or any page, show some class when you post stuff. Think about people, right? It's okay if you want to post whatever, but just have some class, like in the, in the pictures and the photos you want to show. Yeah. Like, don't be such an ass. Uh, and then for the UFC, I thought this was clever. Sucks to be you, FC. Because <laughs> it was, uh, you know, their shadow ban. So anyways, those are my two banners. I I swear to God, Brady Bunch, every week I prepare banners. And then I realize the whole show goes on and I don't put any of them up. That was the whole point of it. When my mom used to watch this podcast, uh, she used to love the fact that I would have the little banners. And she's like, oh, it's so cool. It's such a good little thing you know like she was always very supportive of that and i totally forget to do that all the time uh brady bunch this is it for the podcast um thank you for waking up so early with me all the best to you in the week we will talk soon um is there anything you want to say to people before we get out of here no nah, just spread the word to your friends about the show uh yeah. can't wait for the future i know we got some cool guests coming up yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll let you know who's on next week soon. And uh, the the girl that Celeste said that we can have on, that's pretty cool too. So I'm glad that she's going to send us a, a cool new guest and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome.
All right. For the people, uh, for this ends it for the audio listeners. For those watching on YouTube, you're going to see some videos here that you can click on. I'll put some that are kind of related to maybe what we spoke about today. But aside from that, have a good one, guys. See you, Brady Bunch.